When is it a good idea to check for absolute convergence rather than regular convergence? Well, an answer that I can give you is whenever we have a series that involves sine or cosine, especially if it's just on the numerator, <laughs> like that one. And you can take a look right here and you see that this is actually not alternating in the usual sense. Because if you put n is equal to 1, we get sine of pi over 4, that's going to be positive. And then if we put n is equal to 2, we get pi over 2, and sine of pi over 2 is positive 1, right? And then again, if you continue, sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive, and then sine of pi is 0, and then sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative, and then you get negative, and so on, so on, so on. As you can see, this is really not the alternating series that we have. Alternating series should be positive, negative, positive, negative, or the other way around. So we cannot use the alternating series test for this. So let's go ahead and check for absolute convergence. And the main reason why this is actually so much better to do is because notice whenever we have sine or cosine, here we have sine, and whatever you put inside, so let's just put on sine of theta, the value of this is in between of negative 1 and 1 inclusively. So we can say the absolute value of sine theta is always going to be less than or equal to 1. So you see, if we apply the absolute value right here, we get to use this. And you see that we have this inequality. And then we can use the comparison test. Very nice, huh? So checking for absolute convergence, let's write this down again. And then right here, we just have to put the absolute value. And then inside here, we have sine of pi over 4 times n and then divide it by n to the second power. OK, first off, the absolute value of a quotient is a quotient of the absolute value, meaning that this is the same as saying the series as n goes from 1 to infinity. And we can look at the absolute value of sine of pi over 4 n and then divide it by absolute value of n squared. But that's always positive. So we can just put down the n squared right here. All right. And as you can see, now we have this inequality that we can use. So we know right away this is going to be less than or equal to, and we can just write down the rest. Series as n goes from 1 to infinity. But instead of putting this down, we can just say that's 1 over n squared. Have a look, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is a very nice p series. We know that the p right here is equal to 2, which is greater than 1. And that means this series converges. And we have this series is actually less than or equal to a convergent series. So we know this right here also converges. And because we use this inequality, so this is what? This is the direct comparison test. So let's go ahead and write that down by the direct comparison test. And as you can see, if we have the absolute value version of this series that converges, the original version, it must also converge because it converges absolutely. All right, so that's it.